Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a question many of you have been asking. Is the M1 MacBook still a relevant purchase or the while in 2025? It's been a few years since Apple revolutionized the laptop market with its own groundbreaking M1 chip. And now we have M2, M3 and even M4 MacBooks are the same. So that's the go. M1 still stands strong or has it finally been loved in the dust? We're going to dive deep, breaking down its pros and cons for different user categories and help you decide if an M1 MacBook is right for you in 2025. The M1's legacy and current landscape. Remember in 2025, the M1 chip burst into the scene, offering incredible performance and better life in a fanless design and a powerful pro model. It truly changed the game. Fast forward to 2025 and while well, Apple has iterated with newer, more powerful chips, the M1 isn't just collecting dust, it's still readily available, often repurposed and sometimes in incredible prices. But with the M4 Air and Pro now offering even more. Where does the M1 fit in? General pros of the M1 MacBook in 2025. Let's start with the good news. The M1 MacBook still packs a punch in several key areas. Exceptional battery life. This remains a hallmark of Apple Silicon. Even in 2025, the M1 MacBook, especially the Air, can easily give you a full day or more of regular use. This is a massive advantage over many Windows laptops. Solid performance for everyday tasks, general productivity for web browse, email document editing, and general productivity. The M1 is still incredibly fast and responsive. It doesn't feel any lag or slows down in this common workflows. Fanless design M1 Air. The silence of the M1 Air is a joy. No wearing pants, just quiet, efficient operation, making it perfect for quiet environments. Premium build quality. It's a MacBook. You get the signature aluminum unibody design, fantastic keyboard, and industrial leading trackpad. This don't age. Mac OS ecosystem. Access to symbols Apple ecosystem, including continuity features. Airdrop, iMessage, and invest library optimized apps is a huge plus for many. Value proposition, refurbished or reused. This is where M1 truly shines in 2025. You can find excellent deal on M1 MacBooks, especially refurbished units, making them a very affordable entry point into the Apple ecosystem with serious performance. Now let's be realistic. There are some downsides to consider when looking at an M1 in 2025. Limited parts. Both the M1 Air and the base M1 Pro only have two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. This means dongle live is compatible. Power Pros offer more. Newer Pros offer more. Single external display. M1 Air. This is a big one for many. The M1 Air can only natively support one external display. If you rely on dual monitor setup, You'll need a dock with display link, which isn't ideal for everyone. The M1 Pro is better here. Older design. While still good, the M1 Air is designed with its thicker bezels and which set looks a bit dated compared to the sleeker, more modern N2, M3, M4 designs. Never promotion display. The 60 hz display on the M1 Air and base M1 Pro isn't as buttery smooth as the 120Hz promotion displays found on newer Pro models. For most, it's not a deal breaker, but it's a noticeable difference if you've experienced the promotion. Less future proof. While still supported by macOS updates, the M1 chip is now a few generations behind. As software demands grow and new AI features become more relevant, the M1 will inevitably hit its performance, selling sooner than newer chips. Excellent for most coding tasks for web development, scripting, mobile app development especially iOS, iPadOS with Xcode. The M1 remains incredibly capable. Compilations are fast and the unified memory architecture handles many tasks efficiently. Good for light to medium darker VMUs. While HDBRAM might be a bottleneck for heavy docker or multiple VMs. For typical development environments, the M1 holds up surprisingly well. Many developers report positive experience with 16GB M1 models, portably for coders who work on the go. The M1 Air's lightweight design is a significant advantage. 8GB RAM can be limiting. If you're running multiple demanding applications, numerous Docker containers, 8GB of RAM will likely lead to extensive warping. Or large-scale project, 8GB of RAM will likely lead to extensive swapping and slowdowns. 16 gigabytes is highly recommended for serious coding. Never active colon. For prolonged, intensive compilation tasks, the M1 can thermal throttle. Through the most coding, this is really an issue. The M1 Pro with its fan handles sustained loads 
single external display. Many developers are ready for multiple monitors, which can be paid with the M1 Air Soul Mediation. Who is it great for? Student learning to code, web developers, mobile app developers, especially iOS, and those with the lighter coding workloads. Who is it bad for? Enterprise level software engineers running many microservices, heavy data scientists, or anyone who frequently relies on multiple demand in VMs, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, and Capture One run beautifully on the M1. Raw file processing is sweet, and basic to intermediate edits or assemblies. Good color accuracy. Retina display. The M1 MacBook's Retina display offers excellent color accuracy, crucial for photo editing. Long battery life. You can edit photos on location without constantly searching for a power. Outlet. RAM limitations with very large files. If you're working with extremely high resolution raw files, that's 50 megapixels plus from modern cameras or complex Photoshop documents with many layers, 8 gigabytes of RAM will be a bottleneck. 16 gigabytes is highly commended for serious pod editors. No exterior display. The M1 Pro and newer M series Pros offer liquid rain exterior displays with higher brightness and contrast, which were superior for. HDR photo editing. Who is it great for? Harvest Photographer. Photographer working with modern resolution files up to 30 to 40 megapixels and those primarily doing basics to intermediate edits. Who is it bad for? Professional photographers dealing with very large high resolution files. Complex composites are those who need an HDR capable display. For video editing, impressive power key editing capabilities. The M1 MacBook, even the Air can handle 4K editing in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, surprisingly well. Thanks to Apple's media engines, playback is smooth and export times are respectable for its class. Energy efficiency. Encoding and decoding video is very efficient on the M1, leading to less heat and longer battery life compared to the Intel machines. Limited for heavy duty projects. If you're working with multiple streams or 4K, 8K footage, complex effects, motion graphics, or frequently exploring long projects, the M1's limitations in RAM and lack of dedicated cooling on the air will become apparent. You will experience a longer render times and potential slowdowns. 8GB of RAM is very attractive. For serious video editing, 8GB is almost a non-starter. 16GB is the bare minimum and even then heavy projects will push it. No Pro Display exterior quality. For professional score grading, the M1's display, well good, doesn't match the capabilities of the exterior displays on higher-end Pros. Who is it great for? YouTubers, content creators doing 4K edits with relatively simple timelines and students learning video editing. Who is it bad for? Professional filmmakers, BFX artists, or anyone working with compressed 4K footage or high complex multi layer video projects. For students, exceptional battery life, project for all their classes, library sessions, and late night study marathons without needing a hunt for an outlet. Lightweight and portable, easy to carry around campus in the backpack. Robust performance in academic tasks, word processing, presentations, research, web browse. The M1 handles it all with ease. Durable build can withstand the rigors of student life. Excellent values, especially for rest. Students can often get an M1 MacBook at a much more affordable price point, making it a smart financial decision. Limited gaming, while Apple Silicon is improving for gaming. The M1 isn't a gaming powerhouse. Storage consideration. The base 256GB SSD might fill up quickly with notes, projects, and media. So, consider a 512GB option if budget allows. Who is it great for? Almost all students across various disciplines. From humanities to engineering, who need a reliable, long-lasting, and powerful laptops for the studies. Who is it bad for? Students in highly specialized fields requiring extreme computational power that is advanced 3D rendering, machine learning research on device who might need an M4 Pro or Max, for office works and casual users, overkill in the base way, for typical office tasks like email, spreadsheets, presentation, video conferencing, Zoom, Teams, and general web browse, the M1 is incredibly fast and smooth. You will experience zero lag. 
silent operation for open plan offices or working from home without distracting fan noise. Long term reliability. These machines are built to last and will easily serve casual and office users for many years to come. Security and privacy of macOS. A strong operating system for sensitive work. Fantastic video calls. Image signal processor delivers excellent webcam quality for virtual meetings. Might be overspaced. For purely casual use, the M1 might be more powerful than strictly necessary. But the longevity and smooth experience make it a worthwhile investment. Price. While cheaper than newer models, a new M1 still costs more than many basic Windows laptops. But the experience justifies the cost for many. Who is it great for? Everyone. From executive to home users, the M1 MacBook provides an exceptional frustration pre experience for daily computing. Who is it bad for? Practically no one in this category. It's a fantastic fit. Should you buy an M1 MacBook in 2025? So the big question is the M1 MacBook Pro worth it in 2025? Yes, for the most people, if you can find an M1 MacBook Air, especially with 16 gigabytes of RAM or an M1 MacBook Pro at a good price, it absolutely remains a highly recommended machine. The performance for its age is remarkable. Bare life is still top tier and the macOS experience is excellent. Consider your specific needs. Heavy creative professionals, 8K video, complex 3D, lower scale music production. You will benefit significantly from the M3 or M4 Pro Mac chips with more ports, RAM and dedicated media engines. Users who need multiple external displays look at the M1 Pro, which supports two or newer M series models. Those who prioritize the absolute latest design and features the M2, M3, M4 Air offers thinner bezels, better cameras, and MagSafe on the Air. The sweet spot for incredible values. Look for a first M1 MacBook Airs with 16 gigabytes of unified memory. That's where you get the most bang for your buck in 2025. The M1 MacBook truly issued a new era. Even years later, its efficiency and performance holds up incredibly well for a vast majority of users. While newer chips offer incremental improvements, the M1 remains a powerhouse, especially when factory in its often lower price point. Don't underestimate this original M chip champion. What I thought you still rock an M1 MacBook Air in 2025, let me know in your experience in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech insights. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.